Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome back to wrap up a great day of sessions with Allison and Supra to talk to us about push notifications with Facebook Analytics for Apps. Hi, everyone. I'm Allison, and I'm a product marketing manager on the Facebook platform team. And I'm Supra, a product manager on the platform team as well. How's everyone doing today? Awesome. So today, Allison and I are super excited to chat with you guys about push notifications with Facebook Analytics for Apps. So to get things started, by show of hands, how many of you have built or are building an app today? <laughs> cool, me too. So for people like us, Facebook Analytics for Apps was launched last year to help us better understand our audiences, specifically the actions that people are taking in our apps. These actions, such as search, content view, purchase, have been locked as, uh, logged as app events, which you've used to create segments, build funnels, and measure ad performance. In this example, you can log an app event when I add my favorite shirt to my shopping cart in your e-commerce app. This enables you, the developer or marketer, to take a variety of different actions, such as surfacing an ad. So this brings us to today. We wanted to build a product that harnesses the power of app events, which again, captures the actions that people are taking in your app to make them even more useful while providing a tool that enables you to reach and re-engage your audience. So today, we're super excited to announce the push notifications beta in Facebook Analytics for Apps. This product will let you send the right message to the right people at the right time. And it has two parts. The first is the push notification that we all know and love. And the second is what we're calling in-app notifications, which enables developers and marketers, you guys, to send rich notifications to your audience directly inside your app. But before we dive into the product, let's take a step back and talk about why push notifications are important. Whether you're a large ride-sharing app looking to reward your riders with promotions, or maybe you're a small e-commerce app looking to re-engage your audience, push notifications have become a recognizable, familiar, and ubiquitous channel for all sorts of businesses. Developers and marketers use push notifications to give a voice to their brand, drive engagement, and communicate relevant information in a timely manner. But as I'm sure many of you know, using push notifications well is quite a challenge. For example, how many of you have run into something like this? Yeah, me too. Annoying push notifications are the absolute worst. But they're not just annoying. A recent study showed that 71% of all app uninstalls are actually due to annoying or irrelevant push notifications. This is a massive number. And it's more critical than ever that developers and marketers wield push notifications with care and precision. Like in this example, where I've sent a push notification to a highly specific subsection of my audience, letting them know there's a power-up available just for them. I'll come back to this example later. But this type of high signal, low noise push notification is more critical than ever for success. And we're here to help you do just that with an easy, powerful, and customizable solution that is entirely free. So let's dive into the product. To do this, we're going to talk about the who, the how, and the what. So who can you send a push notification to? Push notifications with Facebook Analytics for Apps relies entirely on the app events we talked about earlier. That is, the actions that people are taking in your app. So based off of those actions, you can create audience segments and then target 
push notifications based on those audience segments. So for example, if I was searching for my favorite flannel shirt and I saw that it was out of stock, it would be really useful and generally awesome if I could get a push notification when that shirt was back in stock. As the developer or marketer, you would accomplish this by capturing an action, in this case, add flannel shirt to cart, and then sending a push notification based on that criteria. OK, so now we know who we're going to send the push to. Let's talk about how. In the brand new Facebook Analytics for Apps UI, on the left-hand navigation, right underneath the brand new People tab, you'll find the Push Campaigns tab as a expandable menu. Once you click in, you'll be greeted with two options, in-app notifications and push notifications. I'll let Allison talk about the differences between these two types of notifications. But first, let's dive into the different campaign types governing both. The first type of campaign is what we're calling one-time campaigns. These are exactly what they sound like and are pretty straightforward. I have a specific group of people that I want to send a push notification to on a specific day and a specific time. Once those push notifications have been sent, the campaign is complete. I also have the option to send in absolute time or device local time. Device local time is really useful for those of you with audiences spanning multiple time zones or internationally. After all, nobody wants to receive a push notification at 2 in the morning. Examples of one-time campaigns are numerous. Let's say you're an e-commerce app and you want to let everyone who purchased electronics in the last 30 days know that Black Friday is coming up. Maybe there's a specific sale. Or maybe you're a music app, and you want to let your EDM fans know about an upcoming Alesso concert. These are both great examples of one-time campaigns. On the other side of the spectrum, we have continuous campaigns. These are a little different and a little bit more powerful. Continuous campaigns allow you to send push notifications on an ongoing basis, depending on when members of your audience fall into specific segments. So in this example, I want to send a push notification to those folks who have added something to their cart but haven't yet performed a cart emptying action, let's say in the last three days. To do this, I would have my two app events, Add to Cart and Checkout, and create the campaign based on that criteria. As a result, those folks who have added to cart but haven't purchased or checked out in the last three days would receive the push notification, whereas the folks who have actually purchased or checked out would not receive the push notification. Continuous campaigns are powerful because I can set them and forget them and watch members of my audience receive pushes or not receive pushes depending on the criteria that I have established. To really drive this point home, let's return to that game example. If I'm a game developer, and I've noticed that members of my audience are really struggling to hit level 8 after hitting level 7, I can let them know, using a continuous campaign, that there is a power-up available just for them. Great, so now I'm going to hand it off to Allison to talk about the what. Awesome, thank you. Awesome. So now that we've talked about the who and the how, let's talk about the what. So what types of push notifications can you create with this product? Well, there are two specific types. And the first is a notification that we're all familiar with. And for those of you with the F8 app downloaded today, you can actually see this in action. I've just sent you a notification of this type. So I'll give you a moment to check your phones here. But essentially, this is just the notification that appears on the lock screen. You'll swipe to unlock, and it deep links to a specific place in that app. And for those of you who don't have the F8 app or don't have push notifications turned on, this is what you would have received. The copy just reads, confused by this push? Join us for a session in HackerY on Facebook Analytics for Apps. So obviously here, the primary purpose of this particular push campaign, just to create FOMO for everybody else that didn't come to this session today but still got this notification. The second type of notification that we support is our in-app notification. And this is really our way of helping you create rich push experiences. 
and app notifications support a variety of different media types, including photos and animated GIFs, and they're shown as a new card within your app. They're also highly customizable to match the elements of your app so that the push feels as native as possible, and we're entirely open sourcing these on GitHub so that the client-side framework and format offer even greater flexibility, and we're committed to incorporating your contributions into the course specifications. So to give you a sense of the breadth and diversity of in-app notifications, we've created a couple of examples here, and as you can see, these all have a very different look and feel, but we're all created from directly within the same UI. And just to illustrate how easy it is to create in-app notifications that look like these, I'd like to dive into a demo of our UI. And so to set this up, let's say I'm a music streaming app, and one of my top artists, Supra here, has recently released his music video for his song, Hotline Bling. You may have heard of it. And I would like to send an in-app notification to anyone that has taken an action in my app to express interest in his music. So maybe they've added him to their favorite artist list, or they've added a bunch of his songs to his playlist. Whatever the case is, I want to send them an in-app notification to bring them back into my app and have them watch this music video in my app. So before I get started here, you can see that we are in the analytics UI, in the push campaign section in the left nav here, which as Super mentioned is right below the new people tab that we just announced earlier today. On the very right here, we have a preview of what the in-app notification will look like, and this will show up on different uh, devices and screen sizes, so I have a toggle here that I can toggle between. And then the very middle is just all the customization that I can undertake. So I'm going to get started, and the first thing I'm going to do is change the layout here. So I'm going to start by changing this from a medium-sized card to a full-screen card. And you can see that there are a bunch of different button and card layouts, but I'm going to keep mine as it is. Next thing I'm going to do is go in and unround the corners of my notification and also change the background color. So here I'm sharpening the corners, and then here I'm going to change the background color. And this is where the text sits on top of. So I'm going to specify this to be a dark gray. And once I zoom out, you'll be able to see that all my changes are reflected immediately live on the right. Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and specify my header image. And again, here you can use an animated GIF um, or an image. Here I'm going to use Supra's album cover art here. <laughs> and once I've chosen that, I can then go and adjust the height of this image. So I'd like this to be pretty immersive. I'm going to make this a full screen card. Next thing I'm going to do is add my body text. So here I'm going to write, this just in, Supra's new Hotline Bling music video is now out in Allison's app. And then here I can change the font, the color, the size, and the alignment of the text. And once I've done that, I can then move on to my button. So I'm going to start with the leftmost button here, the blue one. And I'm going to have this deep link to a specific place in my app where people can watch this video. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to specify the URL. And then once I've done that, I'm also going to specify the label text, which is the text that will appear on top of the button. So here I'm going to write, watch video. Then I'm going to go in and change the button color. And here I'd like to do a hot pink to match the background of this great image here. And I'm also going to change the size of this text. And then I can move on to the button on the right. And this one, I'd like to be a dismiss. And so I'm going to write here, I'll let that hotline bling. And again, I'm going to go in and change the size of the text as well as the button color. And so for the button color, I'm going to choose a bright purpley color. Awesome. So as you can see, we really designed this UI with ease of use in mind. We wanted to create a really powerful tool that would enable you to design beautiful in-app notifications in a really intuitive way without being a designer. And actually, a lot of the elements and features of this UI were influenced by the conversations that we've had with the developers that have helped us beta test our products. So I'd like to highlight a case study of one of these beta testing partners. It's an app called Tinder. It's a social discovery platform that's seen really great success in using this product. So Tinder has seen a lot of great growth over the last couple years, and one of the things that they've noticed is that the people that were filling out their profiles in the app tended to get more matches. And this would then serve as a positive reinforcement for these users to then go out and have more conversations in the app, send more messages, be more engaged, just have a better user experience overall. But Tinder also noticed that there was a good chunk of users that weren't filling in their profiles. 
specifically leaving out fields like education and work history. So how could they solve for this and boost engagement? Well, in order to communicate the value of completing a profile, Tinder decided to promote an existing feature of theirs called Smart Profiles. And Smart Profiles is a feature that surfaces relevant information that you have in common with your potential match based on the information contained in both of your profiles. So this might be things like whether you've worked at the same place before, whether you have mutual friends in common. This here is an example of someone seeing that their potential match has also gone to the same college as them. And the idea behind this is to empower you to make more informed decisions and ultimately help you make more meaningful connections within the app. And so to communicate this feature, they decided to create a push campaign. And how did they approach this? Well, if we're thinking about this in terms of the paradigm that we've defined previously, so the who, the how, and the what, first they had to define who their audience was. So who were they going to send this push notification to? Now here they were basically looking at anyone that had created an account but hadn't filled in all the details of their profile. So this would be anyone passing the app event completed registration that hadn't passed the app event profile completed. So that's the who. Then they had to decide how they wanted to send this campaign. So whether this was going to be a one-time or a continuous campaign. And here a continuous campaign would actually make the most sense because it would enable Tinder to reach not just those with incomplete profiles now at this specific point in time, but also any new users signing up in the future that might have an incomplete profile down the line. Then they had to decide what they wanted to send. And here Tinder chose to send an in-app notification utilizing a GIF to capture the attention of their users. And so the end result looked a little something like this. And as you can see, the notification appears on the lock screen here. And once you unlock, you're taken into the app. You're greeted by this in-app notification with this great GIF here. And once you click Update My Profile at the bottom, you're directly deep linked into the flow that would enable you to edit your information and fill out the rest of your profile. And so in this way, Tinder was able to create this really highly targeted, relevant in-app notification, and we couldn't be happier with the result. So to get started creating push campaigns like these of your own, all you have to do is integrate the latest Facebook SDK, start logging app events to capture the actions that people are taking within your app, and sign up for our beta from directly within the analytics UI. And so just to recap, our mission when it comes to offering push notifications in Facebook analytics for apps is to help you reach the right audience with the right message at the right time. And so to do this, we talked a lot about who you can send a push notification to and how you can target campaigns based on the actions that people have taken within your app. We also talked a lot about how you can send these campaigns, whether it be as a one-time campaign scheduled for a specific point in time or as a continuous campaign that runs in an ongoing fashion. And finally, we talked about what you can send, whether it be the notification that I sent you guys through the F8 app or the customized in-app notification we created through the demo. So we're really excited for you to get your hands on this product, and we can't wait to see what we can come up with and create. If you want to experience it for yourself today, we actually have a push notification section within the analytics experience located in the Festival Pavilion here, and we'll be there all day today and tomorrow. So if you have any questions or thoughts, not just on push notifications, but on analytics or anything we launched at FA today, please come by. We would love to hear from you. So thank you guys so much for joining us today, and we'll catch you guys later. Hi, hi. Thanks. Thanks, guys. That wraps uh, today's sessions. Uh, happy hour starts at 4 o'clock outside.